Okay, so I'm going to talk um, about privilege separation and a new um, technology that I've been working on for just over a year in OpenBSD. I'm not going to speak about privilege separation on its own and not really just about pledge. I'm not going to describe it very much, but I'm going to try to talk about the intersection of the way that these two things came together, in, uh, which I thought was quite surprising. So in, in, in OpenBSD, um, we generally try to work at all of the layers of the software stack. But I've kind of emulated the, the OSI uh, stack here to, to show the different components. And at different levels, we've been able to have different types of influence on the software ecosystem, not just in OpenBSD, but in also in other operating systems, all the way from, from the general sort of large applications that people install, uh, all the way down into the kernel, introducing small little changes which eventually get adopted by other systems. Hopefully, we don't always win. Not all of them are accepted. But the two I'm going to focus on here are is privilege separation, which uh, we do at an application level, and pledge, which is at the system call level. So I should do an introduction of, of privilege separation. It's, it's, it's a designed pattern. It's a way you, you, you write a program. In, in general, we do this for, for brand new pieces of software. It's sometimes difficult to, to um, insert the functionality or the design into a piece of software later on. The, the, the idea is that, that, that things are split into, into multi, that, that a particular service, a program, is split into multiple programs, interconnected with pipes that, that talk to each other and tell each other what to do. And then each process is designed to perform a separate function, as a security function of a function of, of this nature or a function of that nature. And, and you don't have the main program going in, in a single function capable of doing everything. So these processes are cooperating together uh, to perform a single task. Sometimes this is called sandboxing, but I don't like the word sandboxing because sandboxing is now something that people talk about all the way to like uh, in, inside virtual machines and large full operating system stacks and they say it's sandboxed. Uh, this is a type of sandboxing that's done very low. I'm gonna focus on, on one specific example, try not to get into too many details. Um, our, our NTP daemon, and this is a simplified diagram of what we actually did. Um, it has three processes, and they communicate with pipes. The, the main process starts up. Um, of course, it's running as root. Um, but in the end, after it has spawned off the two other service processes, it's only supposed to go and set the time of the machine or adjust the time of the machine in some way. The, the two other processes uh, standing on the side uh, one of them is a network speaker which talks the NTP protocol to various hosts out on the internet and learns time information from them. And that's, that's its job, is to connect to these things and send and receive UDP packets and generate some sense of time, which is then tells the master. The other thing we've got is a separate DNS servicer process because we want to be able to do DNS, but we didn't want the master process to do it because DNS libraries sometimes have bugs. And we didn't want the internet speaker to do it because it just didn't make sense. Pri privilege separation in that process is a very simple thing, but I'll kind of mention that there have been larger programs that use this concept. The first one was Qmail. It did it actually by scanning directories, separate processes. And around that time, that time a second uh, program started adding privilege separation due to the same cause, which was Sendmail which Postfix started actually doing uh, privilege separation using sockets. This led um, uh, Niels Provost to go and extend OpenSSH um, during the birth of OpenSSH to actually do privilege separation as well for the pre-authentication. It's a, quite a complicated protocol um, with authentication to go and add it to. And the final main example is Chrome. I mean, Chrome was designed from the get-go, and I, I sometimes wonder whether Niels Provost, who started working for uh, Google around that time, was influential in that design that caused Chrome to be threaded and multiple processes with separation and the tasks all split up. So it's, a, it's defense in depth when you get right down to it. It's, an, it's a low-level design of a piece of software to behave in certain ways in separate units so that it, in the worst case, if one of those processes dies or gets attacked, the whole thing will fall apart and, and fail closed. So in OpenBSD, we took this paradigm um, over the last um, 
almost 15 years, and extended it daemon by daemon by daemon, and sometimes not even in daemons. And we started applying it to processes, sometimes rewriting them from scratch, sometimes uh, just uh, tweaking the program and massaging code around until we could actually get to this particular type of structure. And it started off with routing daemons. Later on, a full-on SMTP program. We added it to our DHCP tools. We even added to TCP dump. Um, and I've got a list of some of them over here. You can even see it's even now in our package add tool, uh, which is actually written in Perl. So we have privilege separated Perl code. Kind of a strange thing. So the thing is now that we have this, it turns out it, the software is designed to be secure. It's designed to be separated, but we haven't got anything which really makes sure that it is doing, performing as it's supposed to. So that's when uh, Pledge came up. So pledge is a system call request that a process can do. Like I said, I'm not really going to describe pledge in detail. You can find some of this from other talks. But the system call request is used to request only certain packaged sets of behaviors that are part of POSIX. And we have subsets like standard IO, which is your general sort of everyday library functionalities that, pe that pieces of software need to deal with open file descriptors or not. We have read path, write path, and create path to read files out of the file system or create new files in the file system. Or we have C path, which, sorry, C path is for creating them. We have F adder, which is an attribute which is, allows some types of chmod and chone uh, modifications on files. And then you have your inet for being able to open sockets. Uh, we have a DNS separate out into a separate uh, functionality. And the really important ones over there are file descriptor passing, sending, and receiving, which are fundamental to many um, pieces of privileged, privileged, uh, privileged separated software that they want to be able to uh, exchange file descriptors between each other. This is not like seccomp at all. Seccomp is basically um, uh, a simplified version of an old OpenBSD te technology written by Niels Provost as well, uh, which was called SysTrace. SecComp is only really a filter of the actual system calls. Pledge is more than macro packages of system calls. There are some deep behaviors inside the kernel um, that uh, really um, work with the way that, that modern programs are written. Um, to go back to the NTP example, um, since the process is already separated to have these particular rules, it turns out that we pretty much just have to categorize them into these, these behaviors, that one of them is an INET speaker, and the other one is a DNS speaker, and the other one is allowed to set the time. It seems really simplistic to, to, to expose us for an NTP daemon, but it's a, it's a goal that we try to apply to each of our, each of our pieces of software to revamp them and, and move them around, to, to try to achieve this as a target such a type of simplicity. Unlike something like SecComp and uh, other sorts of uh, tools like that, they usually are an outside monitor or such. With, with Pledge, the idea really is that a process goes and says, from this moment of time in the code where I am, I promise that I will only use these subsets of POSIX. I will not use anything else. So for example, in, in, in our NTP daemon, in one of our processes, we have the situation where it goes and says, I only need standard IO features and DNS features. I don't need anything else. The, it cannot undo that promise once it makes that promise. And if it violates it, it gets killed. So here's an example of the process, trying to open up a socket, and it's not allowed to open up a socket. And therefore, it gets killed. And a tracing of the process shows that it is failing, that, that it's being killed in this way. And the beautiful thing is it dumps a core file. So you can go and use your debugger and you'll have a great debugging experience determining exactly why that program is trying to do something which you just promised it wouldn't do. What was really interesting about this process is how many mistakes it actually ex exposed in our privilege separated programs. We had very carefully gone and designed these programs to separate their functionality so that this process of the BGP daemon would do this and the other one would, the other process would have this role. Sometimes we found out that we had not actually written the, the separation of the code in exactly the right style and so we had to make adaptations. So it's like a design rule gets established and then you break it. But we had nothing to tell us that it was being broken because we had nothing to validate. 
that we are actually following the design pattern correctly. So I'm just going to tell a story about uh, three of these daemons over here, which I've mentioned over here. In the NTP daemon, the, the DNS process would sometimes go and try to open a socket. It was just a misdesign. So we had to reorchestrate the code. The BGP daemon and a lot of the other routing daemons were very interesting. They are a triangle of three processes that work together. A main process that can enter routes into the kernel to teach the kernel what the routing should be. And a second process, which is your internet speaker, which speaks your BGP or whatever routing protocol. That process uses a pipe connected to a route decision engine, which does all of the number crunching to decide what your route should be, which feeds it back to the main process that can insert them into the kernel. In the BGP daemon, we actually discovered to a surprise that our session engine speaking with the internet was opening sockets to the outside world. That doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, it's supposed to speak to the internet, read and write, but it doesn't mean it has to be the one opening the sessions. So we made it, changed it so the main process, the main engine, opens the sockets to the outside, immediately passes the file descriptions to the session engine, so the session engine can then talk to the internet until the, so the sockets are closed. And this is a very wonderful design because the internet facing receiving process, if it gets corrupted, is no longer able to open a socket to the outside world. It can only operate on what it has. In TCP dump, we had another situation where we have the separation of a beautiful parser that just goes and does text parsing and shoves it out to standard output. The entire packet filtering is separate into another process until you type control C. And when you type control C, you discover it does an IO control against the BPF descriptor that it's not even supposed to have to go and determine, look at the statistics. Like, that was crazy. So we have to move the statistical handling out to the main process. So it's very, very nice to actually have this mechanism to determine whether our, our, our privileged separated designs were correct or not. There's future work to be done as a result of this. It's quite clear, having looked at this now and trying to apply pledge to so much of our source tree and so much of our privileged, privileged separated daemons, we've actually discovered that OpenSSH, one of our premier privileged separated daemons and clients doesn't have as much separation as we wanted to. We should revisit that and see if we can do better. It's, 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 it could do with a refresh. Something else I really want to keep working on in the system is to refine the semantics. There's some, there's some edge conditions that I'd like to make just slightly better and there's other members of, of, of the team working with me to try to refine these. But we don't want to refine too far because other operating systems have also indicated an interest in actually adopting something like this. But it's not quite clear whether, we'll be, whether exactly the same semantics we've invented for OpenBSD will be directly implementable by them. Some, it, it's probably easier for Solaris to adopt something like this than it is for Linux because they have so much binary compatibility that they don't want to go and change. Um, and also it's going to be important for us to keep on observing uh, how other people out on the internet uh, modifying their software, try to use Pledge. And if they try to use Pledge, we should, we should pay attention to that. And we should, we should see if it doesn't work in some cases, have that influence semantics, and we should try to assist people. Because uh, Pledge on its own is one thing, but privilege separation is also now being attempted by, by a few more people. And I, th I think I should probably close with a general observation that has come out of this, which is how important it was to actually have these two um, components fit together, one of them validating the other one, because without that validation, we thought we were doing a, a really great job at privilege separation, but we weren't. But Pledge on its own wouldn't have grown, wouldn't have been developed if it wasn't for this large body of privilege separated software that was showing that refinements of, of Th th that isolation was plausible to be able to define the set of, uh, of, of pledge operations. So perfection is impossible to achieve unless we have something keeping us honest. Thank you very much.